Good evening, everybody. And first of all, can I most sincerely apologize that I'm not with you this evening? To be honest, I would absolutely love to be there. But just as it happens, I've had a conflict. Uh, in my own constituency in Ireland, uh, we have the situation where I am absolutely delighted that my local city of Sligo has been named the volunteering capital for 2017 and we are launching that today. Now given that I was involved in this initiative from the very beginning, this is not something I can miss at home. So on this occasion, I'm afraid local politics is taking precedence over the European aspect. But let me assure you, that's not the case most of the time. And indeed, it's interesting that when I came to this parliament first, I'm now on my third term here, but when I came here first, I was actively involved in setting up two interest groups. The first was the interest group on carers. Uh, Cathy Sinnott, who was an MEP at that time, approached me and asked me if I'd be interested in working with her on that interest group, and I was. And after Cathy wasn't re-elected, then I continued to work as chair of that interest group. And similarly, I started up the interest group on volunteering. So it just happens that this evening, there's a clash and I have to be in Sligo. But I want to take this opportunity to wish you all well and to hope you have a wonderful evening. I also want to apologise to Commissioner Tyson. I am really sorry I cannot be there this evening because I would love to hear what you have to say and I'm sure many of the carers attending today will be interested to hear your ideas on uh, work-life balance and how we reconcile work and family life and of course the Commission are going to come forward with proposals on that in the near future so I'm sure that will be of great interest to all of the people there today but I'm genuinely sorry I'm not there to hear it and at a personal level I just want to commend you on your really good work so far in the whole area of employment and social affairs a hard-working Commissioner and as I said I'm sorry not to be there but Let's just talk for, I, I just want to talk for a few minutes about the work that, that we do in the European Parliament on behalf of carers, I suppose specifically through the interest group. But it is worth mentioning that uh, my involvement in a number of interest groups and in a number of policy fields, it overlaps significantly with my work in the carers interest group. For example, I'm, I'm vice president of the disability intergroup. Uh, I'm also involved in the active ageing interest group, in health and social care, and in many other interest groups, brain, uh, sorry, <laughs> brain, mind and pain interest group. And all of those, in one way or another, overlap with carers. And that goes to show you that carers and their role is, is really central to the way we live our lives. And I think, and I will finish up on, on that point, but I think that's something that people are finally coming to recognize after many years. So, what do we do in the interest group? How do we make a difference, as it were? Well, Euro carers have 10 guiding principles and, and we try to work on those. And those guiding principles are, number one, recognition. That carers are recognized for the work they do. Number two, social inclusion. And it's very, very important that carers are specifically mentioned. We talk about other groups or groups who are marginalised and we want to make sure they are socially included. But very often, because carers operate behind the closed door of their own home, very often on their own and without support, they are sometimes left out. And it is really important that all of our policies uh, in that area must ensure that carers are included. We also have number three, equality of opportunity. And with that, I would put choice because carers need to have a choice, you know, and, and that needs to be recognized. And equality of opportunity is very important. And I can give you just one example of how I, as an MEP, managed to put in, in a piece of legislation something that will help give carers equality of opportunity. And that is in something called the Globalisation Fund. Now, this is a fund that is set up to help workers who are redundant because of globalisation. And it, it allows the, the workers access training, maybe upskilling, 
maybe start your own business, whatever. But if you're one of those workers and you have caring responsibilities, then that might prevent you from being able to access the training or starting your own business, etc. And one of the things that I got written into that legislation was that there would be special allowances for carers who wanted to, to maybe upskill or retrain, whatever, so that they could do it and that their caring responsibilities would not prevent them from doing that. And it's that kind of, of specific, if you like, intervention uh, that can make a difference to people's everyday lives. But just staying with the, the 10 guiding principles from your carers, number five is information. Again, carers must be able to receive information, particularly in my opinion, from other healthcare professionals. Because sometimes what happens is somebody comes home from hospital, they're landed at home, and very often carers do not have sufficient information to care adequately or properly. In many member states, and certainly in my own, people are coming out of hospital much earlier than they used to, very often needing a great deal of care. And unless carers are supplied with that information and on an equal footing, then you know they, they cannot be expected to, to care and care adequately. We also have, as number six, support. Caring for many people, not for everybody, but for many people, is 24-7. Anybody who has to deal with that kind of situation needs very significant support. And that leads us to the next point, which is time off. None of us, it doesn't matter who we are, we can't keep doing the same thing day after day without respite, without an opportunity to draw our breath, without an opportunity to look at our own lives and live our own lives. You are a carer, yes, but you are also an individual with your own needs, etc. And that must be recognised. There's three left, uh, and the next one is compatibility of care and employment. Well, I'm not going to say anything about that because I expect the Commissioner will deal with that in her intervention later. And the last two are health promotion and protection and financial security. Well, again, one of the things we know is that carers tend to become ill more often than you know, a person in the general population because they're under such pressure and such stress. So what you sometimes end up with is somebody who needs a care and then a carer who becomes ill looking after them. So our healthcare systems have to deal with that. And finally, financial security. That is a hugely important issue for all of us. But one of the issues we see time and time again is that carers very often have to take time off work sometimes have to work part-time, sometimes have to give up work altogether in order to care. That means they have a lot less salary and it can also mean that down the line their pensions are impacted. It is absolutely essential that all member states introduce some kind of pension care credits so that those who take time to care are not disadvantaged a second time when it comes to draw their pension. So those are the guiding principles that we work with in the interest group. But maybe just to give you one or two specific examples of, of what we're doing. In our next interest group, which I might add is next Wednesday, we're going to discuss this whole idea of the work-life balance package. And I'll be delighted to host, I think it's about 25, 28 uh, family carers from Ireland who will be able to discuss this issue with representatives from the Commission, with MEPs, so that we can get the input of carers uh, into our discussion. And obviously we are better informed because of that. And indeed the last uh, interest group uh, looked at the UFAMI report on caring for carers. So that just gives you an example of, of what we're going to do next Wednesday and what we dealt with in our last interest group. I suppose if I were to list the achievements of the interest group, I, I think number one would be the fact that I believe we significantly helped to put carers and their needs on the agenda. If I go back mm, 13 years ago, when we started up the interest group, 
uh, there was really very little mention of carers. But since that, now not just because of us, obviously, there were other reasons, but certainly the interest group played its role in ensuring that carers and their needs are now mentioned in European reports, in opinions, in legislative documents. And, and that's really important because it means, you know, you are mentioned, you are there. Also, I think we have, through our joint meetings with other interest groups, raised awareness of the importance of carers. I suppose there are still challenges ahead, huge challenges ahead, and the biggest one probably relates to demography. And I often say that most of us, if we live long enough, will either need care or will need to give care. And I think because of the very fact that people are now recognizing that. I think there is a shift in the way that we look at carers. So before I finish, I just want to say congratulations to your carers. You, are, you have done so much good work in a short spa space of time. You were only 10 years old. You're still a young one, as it were. But yet in that space of time, you have had so many different achievements and your work certainly has been hugely important for carers across the EU, but for us in the European Parliament, acting as a secretariat, ensuring we have information, ensuring we have the input of carers into what we do, you have been hugely important. I know, I don't know if Bridget Barron will be with you today, but I know Bridget very well, and she is, uh, you know, at the top of her game when it comes to, to carers and supporting carers. And I know Bridget was uh, one of the founders of Eura Carers and your first president. I also know Frank Goodwin very well and his excellent work. And of course, John Don, who is your current president. So uh, I am very familiar with Euro Carers and the good work they do. And I want to wish you well, congratulate you on your achievements so far and say that I and I know many other MEPs are really looking forward uh, to working with you in the future and advancing the, the cause of carers. And as I said earlier, and I'll finish with this, ensuring that carers become central to policy making. Because I've often said, without carers, our health systems would collapse. Without carers, our social welfare systems would collapse. And indeed, without carers, society as it now functions just couldn't continue to function. So once there is an understanding of that, then there has to be the next step is that carers must be centre stage in policy development because you cannot leave caring and carers to the fringes anymore where it was before it now has to be part of what we do and your role in euro carers has been hugely significant in that area and i have no doubt will continue to be congratulations happy birthday and i look forward to working with you